Now, next we introduce another uh, important concept, the gradient. Okay, what's the gradient? Uh, so suppose f is a function which is defined near the point A, which means f is defined uh, in an epsilon neighborhood of this point A, okay? Then if the derivative are all, uh, all, all the derivatives exist, uh, if the derivative at this point A exists for all A, or I, ah, this is important. Ah, we uh, the function could have only several partial derivative at this point, but uh, 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 the other derivative could not exist, might not exist. Okay, uh, but uh, we consider the case that all the derivative at this point uh, exist. Then we can construct a vector. Ah, this vector denoted by nabla f a uh, the the component or coordinate of this vector is the partial derivative of f at this point okay uh, this vector or if you like you can uh, write it in a more classical notation df dx1 df dxn okay you should uh you should indicate all the derivatives all the partial derivatives which with respect to x1 xn are taken uh, at the point a but we we can write an a here uh write an a here will tell us that we are taking derivatives at this point a so anyway we construct this vector this vector is called the gradient of f The gradient of f at this point a okay so this is simply a concept uh, gradient so until now for a function defined near a for a function defined in the neighborhood of a we defined the partial derivative also denoted by df dxi a okay and now uh, if the derivative exists for all i uh, we can uh, construct the gradient uh, that is the gradient we just talked about this is a vector uh, this is a vector because it has n coordinates so this is a vector in rn okay this is what we uh, have talked about okay um, now we will consider some example. Consider some example. Example. Um, we this example is interesting. In single value calculus, we see that if the a function has a um, derivative, then it is continuous at the point. Okay. But in multivariable functions, this is no longer true. Ah, so this example tells us that this can happen. The gradient of f exists. This means for all i, this means for all i, the partial derivative exists. But F need not uh, continuous at the point A. F can be F is not necessarily continuous at this point A. Okay. This example is quite easy. F is a function from R2 to R. Two, two valuable function. We defined f x y to be one if x y is zero. Zero if x y is not zero. Okay, so this defines the function in R2. Uh, for this function, for this function, we consider the partial derivative at origin. Okay. 
Password derivative at the origin. We consider df dx at the origin. What's this? Uh, to uh, to study the password derivative, uh, we need to write the function pct pct, which is f uh, a a is the origin plus tei. Okay, but here our i our we consider the first uh, coordinate, therefore this is t1. So this is uh, a is a is the origin. E1 is 1, 0. We consider the uh, partial derivative at this point A, which is back to the first uh, variable. So uh, the pct is this one. This one, what's this? This is uh, f t 0, right? Ah, it is easy. Oh, okay. Ah, A is 0, 0. E1 is 1, 0. A plus T E1 is T 0. So the partial derivative at the origin by definition is the partial de that is the derivative of P C at the at 0. But uh, this is what's this? Because of T 0, uh, if x y is 0, one of the variables is zero, then the value of f is is zero. So uh, by the definition of f, we see that pct is a constant function equal to one for any t. Okay, so the derivative is zero. Okay, so the partial derivative of this function f, which leads back to x at the origin, is zero. Similarly, uh, you can see that the partial derivative which leads back to y is also zero so both derivatives exist but f is not continuous ah, f is not continuous at the origin y is not continuous ah, we can we can see this very easily so f is one on the coordinates axis x axis and y axis but f is zero here so very close to the origin, uh, we, we have point very close to the origin whose value is zero. We also have point also close to the origin, but the fun value of uh, the function at that point is one. Uh, those one those point uh, lies on the coordinate axis. So this implies that f is in uh, is not continuous at the origin. So this is a uh, uh, important uh, phenomenon, uh, a very uh, big uh, difference from uh, single variable functions. Okay. So so far we study uh, derivative at a point. Okay. Uh, for a function f defined uh, near a point, we have study the partial derivative of f, which is back to some certain xi at this point. Now we consider a global uh, situation. Global situation. If uh, if u is an open set and f is a function defined over this set u, okay. So u is open. Therefore, this is u. For any point a, for any point x in u, for any point x in u, there always exists a small neighborhood of this point, so that this neighborhood contained in u. Ah. Any x in u, there exists epsilon positive such that the if neighborhood of this x is contained in u. So, uh, so uh, we can discuss whether the partial derivative at this point exists. Okay. So if if this is the case, if for any x belongs to u, uh, the partial derivative of f and x which leads back to xi exist. So what happened? If this is the case, if this is the case, 
we can we have a new function new function okay defined on you the value of this function at the point x the value of this new function at the point x is the parcel derivative of f at this point with respect to xi uh, because under our assumption these parcel derivatives are all, uh, exist for every x so the x values we we get many many uh Parcel derivative value, uh, okay. We let x we associate this value to x. We define the correspondent from x to this parcel derivative, okay. So this define a new function. This function denoted by denote by dif. So this is the function defined on u. Defined in u, take a new value. Uh, the value of this function is the partial derivative of f at this point. Okay, so this is a new function. Uh, I emphasize that this is a new function generated from the original function. Okay, so once we get this function, we can talk about its continuity. Uh, so uh, we have a definition. If for all i, uh, the partial derivative function dif exists uh, and uh, continues in u, we say that f is continuous differentiable uh, okay so f is differentiable continuous differentiable in u in our this set u okay so uh, let us uh, make it this more clear so given a function f uh, if uh, it has uh, part Parcel derivative with respect to xi at every point, then we get a new function, parcel derivative function. Ah, if for every i, this parcel derivative function exists, and uh, all these parcel uh, derivative functions are continuous, so we say that f is continuously differentiable. Okay. Uh, for simplicity, we use C1 U to denote the set of all uh, continuously differentiable functions defined in U. Therefore, F belongs to this set means that F is uh, continuously differentiable in U. So uh, use this, using this notation, uh, our statement will be uh, more brief and elegant. Okay. Of course, uh, this parcel uh, derivative function DIF as the parcel derivative function in U defined in U can also be defined. Uh, be, denote, be denoted by other uh, uh, notation df dxi or fxi or even fi okay uh, similar to the uh, parcel derivative at a point for parcel derivative functions uh, we also uh, use the uh, same notation okay 